Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And we're going to have such a good conversation today. So please join me in welcoming John Freeman to our program today. Welcome, John. How are you? I'm well, thank you, Deb. Lovely to be here. Wonderful. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you, and then we will jump into this. So John Freeman's diverse background includes studying psychology, philosophy, and human sciences, becoming European IT director for a multinational and a business consultancy career. In parallel, he has spent 40 years in personal development and as an intuition skills trainer. He is well known as a leading practitioner, theoretician, and master trainer in spiral dynamics and is author of the groundbreaking groundbreaking books, The Science of Possibility and Reinventing Capitalism. Previously, a founder director of the UK chapter of Conscious Capitalism, he is a director of the leading edge consultancy Future Considerations, a spiritual intelligence coach, and an organizational development consultant. He is chair of trustees for a charity officially rated outstanding in care and education of young people with special needs. So again, John, welcome. Thank you, Deb. Well, you know, you obviously had a long and wonderful career. And so I always like to ask my guests, tell us a little bit more about how it is that you got to where you are today, because it has been very uh, different. Certainly, certainly. I guess some of it was covered in in the biography you've Mm -hmm. just uh, talked through, because I started with a particular interest Mm -hmm. in people and how people think and why we do what we do and I was kind of going along that path and then I came across a book in the very kind of early days of commercial computing that diverted me I thought oh I want to know about this and that's what led into my IT career and to learning about business Mm -hmm. and discovering that I really liked understanding how how business worked as well as I mean I've I've always had that kind of mindset curious I want to know how this works and so I got diverted from my interest in people for a decade or so Mm -hmm. and then I realized that actually my life was not functioning well Mm. and so I went into a kind of personal development Mm -hmm. path which led to something which I probably need to talk about in a bit more detail which is what led me into my um, my kind of scientific mm-hmm. explorations but the the IT career continued but then I got more into people management and so that gradually morphed into mm-hmm. organizational development mm-hmm. coaching and all the other th- things that were kind of in what you were uh, read out from from my history I mean mm-hmm. what, what the difficulties of getting to be a bit older is one's history gets a bit long um but there there, there was a lot there and it, mm-hmm. it's all kind of relevant to mm-hmm. me now right right yeah it has made you who you are today absolutely well you know there's so many things that that I'm I'm curious about in, in your your bio I mentioned that you are a master trainer in spiral dynamics what is that well, spiral dynamics is a very, very complete and powerful um, theory of human development at almost every level, from the long term kind of 10,000 year history of humans, right down to how children develop mm-hmm. or how we develop as individuals. Um, it it was kind of exciting and frustrating when I came across spiral dynamics around 20 years ago because it started to answer all of the things that I'd gone to university hoping I would find out by studying Mm -hmm. philosophy and psychology Mm -hmm. so it's it's very powerful it has 
massive implications for how you work as an organization. It's uh, got a basis for coaching. So mm -hmm. it kind of it runs like a, um, a, a golden thread through a lot of what I do. Well, explain it in more detail. What what does it entail? What does it entail? So imagine or envisage that humans, when they develop, they adapt to the situations they're in. Okay. And that happens in a particular stage, staged process. Okay. So if you think of the earliest human beings on the planet, they were kind of just in survival mode. Mm -hmm. They were doing whatever it took. Right. To get the fly, fight or flight type of. Mm -hmm. They were absolutely mm -hmm. in, in that and in their sensitivity to mm -hmm. their environment and their awareness of pre predators. And that first stage is, is kind of paralleled by what happens to infants when you're a firstborn. Okay. You're helpless. You, mm -hmm. right. You're just there to survive. Mm -hmm. So the next stage after that is where more people began, began to come together and they began to bond and form mm -hmm kind of tribal societies okay. which is the equivalent of what children do when mm -hmm. they bond with their parents and start mm -hmm. to engage with their wider family mm -hmm. and kind of take on a, an identity okay. which is based on that mm -hmm. the next stage for children is that they start to ask that kind of strange question okay what is this thing that i'm looking at the thing that i see in the mirror and they mm -hmm develop a sense of individual identity and they get in interested in okay what can i do okay and so there's this exploration of empowerment mm -hmm. and that also happened in large scale development because that's the point at which tribes develop towards kind of being warlords and exploring okay. power okay excuse me and um so that's quite a chaotic stage i mean mm -hmm. for the infants it's the point at which they start saying no and mine and, <laughs> no and why right <laughs> and well yeah why comes maybe a little bit after because that's okay. the beginning of the transition into the fourth stage ah. which is the stage where we want to know um okay well what are we here for what's the order in the mm -hmm. universe mm -hmm. and that's an ad adaptation to the chaos of the third stage mm -hmm because um you can't live together in larger numbers mm -hmm. and uh, you it, it becomes actually quite precarious to survive mm -hmm. as an an individual mm -hmm. an individual in the third stage i mean think of tony soprano i mean it's a really kind of it's a, mm -hmm. it's a difficult mm -hmm. existence right and so and actually it's more the story of the godfather i'm using mm -hmm. um mafia examples mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the godfather you get the story of michael who mm -hmm. actually wants the order in his life and he mm -hmm. wants the well how do i create a stable sustainable mm -hmm. future for my family right and of course that's a tragic journey for mm -hmm. for him because it doesn't actually work out that way mm -hmm. but the fourth stage is the source of our interest in systems like religions okay or communism it's where we impose so that's an why order. the why comes in okay that's where the why mm -hmm. becomes quite important so at each stage we're interested in kind of how do we adapt to the new conditions that that stage creates? Mm -hmm. So the ordered stage of stage four, that can become restricted. You get what we call in in England, we, you get the jobs worth. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do that. It's more than my, my job's worth mm -hmm. is, is the, the phrase that goes with mm -hmm. that. And it becomes paralyzing and you can't have the kind of strategic development of, well, how do we do this better? Mm -hmm. And the fifth stage is about doing it better. It's about mm -hmm. leveraging technology. So okay. this is the story of the last couple of hundred years, mm -hmm. um, industrial technology, and then all the stuff that we know mm -hmm. more recently. And that's hugely powerful, but that also creates life conditions that we have to adapt to mm -hmm. in a new way. Because what we also know about that system, apart from the fact that it created a lot of unsustainable conditions now in terms of how we manage the world mm -hmm. it also created a lot of alienation mm -hmm. it kind of puts mm -hmm. people somewhere out there people aren't important anymore right so the sixth stage 
importance of people comes back and that's mm -hmm. the last hundred years where we're engaged in psychology mm -hmm. and things like personal development come mm -hmm. onto the table maybe halfway through that hundred years and all of these stages sit alongside each other and when we're in one of them we're although we've been through each of them in the process of our development mm -hmm. um we're typically operating from the mindset that that particular stage represents mm -hmm. and that creates the dynamics of the ways that all those different mindsets show up say in an organization mm -hmm. so we can map an organization because people will find their comfort zone mm -hmm. you, know, you will find that people okay i've got to i've got to the fourth stage mm -hmm. i like it here i know what i'm doing right i can i can these be, are my people mm -hmm. yeah and i'm safe in this space mm -hmm. and i and i i i get my orders and i follow them and i've got mm -hmm. my processes and i follow those so different people occupy different zones in that and mm -hmm. sometimes that's role related i mean sometimes you want you know, you want your accountants to sit mm -hmm. in that zone, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, because otherwise, you you get on Enron and mm -hmm. you know, lots of other examples. Mm -hmm. Where we are now, and this is a really kind of interesting space to be, for us all to be living in, is that all of those voices are operating in society. They're all operating alongside each other in mm -hmm. organizations. They don't always agree. Mm -hmm. They don't always harmonize. But the point we're at with the massive complexity of the world and the mm -hmm. uncertainty and the volatility mm -hmm. and the unpredictability, we actually need to be able to see all of the stages mm -hmm. and integrate them. And that's the that's the next stage. And it's where I'll kind of stop for the mm -hmm. purposes of this conversation right. is is that the seventh stage is mm -hmm. about integrating and seeing the whole system mm -hmm. in its completeness mm -hmm. it is so as you were talking one of the things that struck me is is this why things like artificial intelligence are really messing people up they're not sure how and and how it's going to affect us uh, you know like you said you know we, we need the people well artificial intelligence takes the people out but we still whoops i'm getting very blurry for some reason um speaking of, see i talk about artificial intelligence and it goes ooh. um <laughs> but uh i think that's the concern that people have is it's taking the people out of the the processes well it's one of i, I would say many concerns absolutely mm -hmm. um but it, and it's at the kind of peak of unpredictability right now because mm -hmm. we don't actually know what it will do right. and some some people think oh it's going to be fantastic and everything will be hunky-dory mm -hmm. and even you know some of the people who write it like you know mm -hmm. created it like sam altman are saying well mm -hmm. actually this is pretty scary stuff mm -hmm. and it could go badly wrong so um yeah a ai i think it has the potential to be a useful tool, which, mm -hmm. like computers themselves, takes some of the kind right. of drudgery mm -hmm. out of the things that we mm -hmm. we do. And largely, I'd be in fra favor of that. Mm -hmm. But when it starts to take over mm -hmm. what people do or where we think it's safe to have AI run the world, mm -hmm. I mean, my perception of AI is that the only intelligence it has is based on the past. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's harvesting information. Mm -hmm. Right. It's going back through whatever. And mm -hmm. and from that point of view, it can't do what people can do in terms of saying, OK, we need something new here. Mm -hmm. And it needs to it needs to come from us and we need to mm -hmm. be engaged with it and we need to be empowered in it mm -hmm. and influential because we don't actually want mm -hmm. to be in a world run by robots right right yeah and and i think that's part of it is we have been influenced by the media and 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 you know we we think of the terminator we think of all these things where robots are taking over to me it was kind of a natural progression um you know that it it was just you know because i mean you, you figure going to google and you know typing in a word is bringing up a search. Well, then it progressed to you typed in a phrase and it brought something up and, you know, and, and, and now it's progressing even further. 
it's, but it is, you know, it, it is very scary. And I think one of the things, I mean, you know, here in the States, we just uh, finished uh, having the, the, the big strike with our, our actors and our writers mm-hmm. who were very rightly concerned that AI was, you know, it, I don't know about writing scripts. I mean, you know, I use it to write content. So, it, you know, but I think it still needs the human touch at this mm-hmm. point. Um, but I think one of the big concerns, obviously, for actors is the ability for it to create people. Um, you know, they there was a, a, a big to do here not long ago where something created an, an artificial image of Robin Williams. And it, it, without permission, I mean, that was the other thing is they hadn't gone to the estate and said, hey, you know, we would like to do this. And so his family was very rightly upset. Mm. And I think that's where it does get concerning is, you know, if it's, you know, even if it's just digital people, you know, and, and, and not robots, things like that, but just digital people, you know, how do we know? And, and we've seen things like deep fakes, right? We certainly have. And, and I mean, you know, if you know what you're looking for, sometimes you can pick those out, but some of them are so good that even the experts can't look at it and go, no, that's not real. And, you know, and, and those those could so seriously affect things. I mean, like one of the things they talk about here in the States is maybe an election. You know, so on election day, what if there is a deep fake that one of the candidates has been killed? Immediately, people are going to vote for the other or not vote at all. Right. Because they're like, well, there's there's no point. And it wasn't real. Um, you know, and 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 I mean, so that is very concerning. Well, it certainly is because the history of manipulation of elections mm-hmm. is it goes back right. like mm-hmm. all the way to, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. through newspapers, every, every mm-hmm. form of media has been mm-hmm. used to manipulate elections. Mm-hmm um for you know as mm-hmm. long as elections have existed mm-hmm. and so that's a concern and i think it kind of speaks into a bigger concern that i have i mean mm-hmm. one of the one of the central pieces of where i go in work with organizations or even in individuals is the understanding of well what life actually consists of what mm-hmm. what is right. life what is life mm-hmm. and One of the ways, say, with organizations is to understand that an organization, which we've tended to think of as a mechanism, Mm -hmm. it's actually a living system. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's filled with people, but also because it's filled with all sorts of things to do with Mm -hmm. context and culture Mm -hmm. and messages and Mm -hmm. history and belief systems. And all of that kind of works through people. Mm -hmm. And the intelligence of an organization exists all the way through the people in the organization Mm -hmm. in the sense that you've got people who are having the direct conversations with customers. Mm -hmm. So they're hearing something that the CEO doesn't hear. Right. They only, they only maybe they might get it through a survey if they're Mm -hmm. lucky, but the people on the ground are getting it right away. Mm -hmm. They're getting the complaints, the, the compliments, all of that. Yeah. And they're getting information about, okay, I, you know this customer had a problem and Mm -hmm. the process says i can't solve that Mm -hmm. problem even though i can see how i would solve it Mm -hmm. if the process you told me i can't Mm -hmm. exactly and so what's what's increasingly needed in organizations is for them to function as living systems Mm -hmm. which self-organize right so that the intelligence of the whole system is present Mm -hmm. in the organization and you get not just a top-down Mm-hmm. structure but you get a bottom up right. emergence of the awareness mm-hmm. and that makes that particularly relates to when i talked about unpredictability and mm-hmm. all of that arena what enables your organization to adapt faster mm-hmm. what enables it to function mm-hmm. when something changes in the in the outside mm-hmm. what enables it to be as as responsible as mm-hmm. responsive as it possibly could mm-hmm. be and that requires a different way of looking at the organization mm-hmm. and allowing the intelligence of the organization mm-hmm. to be functioning mm-hmm. from within so all of these themes come together for me they're all part of the same picture mm-hmm. right well and you know, it's, it's been a while since I've been in, you know, corporate culture, but I remember, you know, and, and of course we hear this all the time, no matter what, 
you know, when somebody goes back to the why question, why do we do it this way? And the boss, the manager, the owner says, because it's the way we've always done it. <laughs> and of course, that's one of the worst things to do. Now, granted, I mean, there might be there might be safety reasons. You know, there are some reasons why, OK, be, you know, that that you do stay with that. But in so many ways, I think it's more people are afraid of change. And, and they might be afraid that, ooh, it's going to mean my job isn't necessary or, you know, or it's going to make more work for me. And so they put it in the little box and they're, you know, you've got, like we said, you've got your rules. Even if you see, wait a minute, there's a better way to do it. If it's not in the box, you don't get to, to even suggest it. Yeah. And that's a bit of a, that's a tricky edge to live on mm -hmm. because yes, if we live from fear, all of the things you've right. just mentioned, mm -hmm. The danger is that that actually becomes mm -hmm. self-sabotaging mm -hmm. or um, counterproductive right. because um, the one thing we do know is you can't protect yourself against change. Mm -hmm. And now when things are changing faster than ever, mm -hmm. actually the attempt to protect yourself against change is one of the things that's most likely to get you into trouble mm -hmm. because it stops you being adaptable. It right. stops you being responsive. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course... You might not do it, but your competitor will. Um, uh, and I think absolutely. that's, you know, that is is the big thing is we might say, well, no, we've we've always done it this way. But, you know, somebody else is going to come along. I mean, you know, it, Amazon, I think, would be the biggest example of that where people went, you know, it, it, no, we people go into stores to buy things. That's just the way it happened. They go into stores and the Amazon went, no, maybe not so much, um, you know, and and. And then COVID, you know, it happened. And, and here in the States, I mean, there were businesses that were shut down for many months and mm -hmm. people then decided, hey, we don't need to go back in. And and the companies that didn't say, OK, we can do this online, we can do you know all these other things, whether it was temporary or more of a permanent type of thing, those companies, for the most part, don't exist anymore. Yes. And um, that's exactly an, an instance of what happens when you when you don't adapt. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm often kind of I, I, I wonder because of one of the things I work with being intuition. I wonder if you go back to when Kodak were faced by. Right. The, Nobody's going to want digital pictures. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have this like I'll bet there was somebody. Mm -hmm. inside Kodak mm -hmm. who said hey there's this mm -hmm. happening and right. we need to pay attention mm -hmm. and and I think that's another piece of the mm -hmm. message is like mm -hmm. picking up on what's going on being aware mm -hmm. being responsive right right well and you know blockbuster video and, and things like that those are other oh. examples of you know and, and it was funny we were thinking about that the other day that we used to go to the store and get the, you know, and, and at that point it was a VHS, then, you know, it, it did evolve into DVDs, but their entire philosophy was, this is the only way to do it. And then Netflix came along, right. And, and said, Hey, you know, you want to just order these, you know, online and, you know, and, and, and it was, and I think there is still, I think, I believe there's still one blockbuster in, in the world. I think it's in Alaska. Um, and it's more, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's, um, uh, it, you know, uh, uh, it's just a fun place for people to go, but I think there is still one blockbuster, but, but yeah, people could not see that things were evolving, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes the evolution, you know, people go, whoops, no, we didn't want to do that. Right. <laughs> but in many cases, then they go, okay, well, that didn't quite work, but this will, um, you know, one of the big things that they've been talking about here in the States, and, and you know, we started this during COVID, was the whole self-checkout lines at grocery stores, right? And and so you did them during COVID because then fewer people touching things, all those various things. And then, of course, fewer employees were needed. But now, you know, people are pushing back. You know, we, we want to have somebody who is there. And more importantly, Stores are discovering that surprise people are stealing stuff, <laughs> you know? and, and and you know sometimes maybe they're not you know it just didn't scan right you know and and but yeah in many cases they're like mm, you know, just put that in the bag uh, you know and and so now they're having to rethink this process 
because it didn't work out quite the way they wanted. But it's not going to go away. I mean, you know, it's well, it, the, the law of unintended con- consequences mm-hmm, right. is always with us. Right. Well, and and it is kind of one of those where you were, you know, every time they're like, well, people were, su- they're surprised that people steal stuff. Really? Who wouldn't foresee that people would steal stuff? I mean, that just that's one of those things that baffles me. Yeah. Well, and then what what you get, of course, is the convergence of multiple mm-hmm. changes happening at the same mm-hmm. time. Right. So, you know, if you if you link the, the fact that people might steal stuff mm-hmm. with, well, certainly in this country, there's a major economic downturn. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more people mm-hmm. who are really on the breadline mm-hmm. than there were right. 12, 24 months mm-hmm. ago. And so you get the convergence of of two things. I mean, when mm-hmm. you you know when we talk about Netflix, mm-hmm. you all you've got the the change of technology in mm-hmm. what we can deliver, but you've also got the whole change in the background of the delivery mechanism. Mm-hmm. Well, we can do you know high speed right broadband, mm-hmm. which you know ten years ago mm-hmm. nobody would have Im- imagined when mm-hmm. we were t- t- trying to work mm-hmm. with I don't know ninety six hundred. Yeah. Per... And and things went boom, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not that long ago, is it? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we hear those noises and we go, oh, it's a modem, right? <laughs> you know, those of us of a certain age, at least. Hmm. Well, and yeah. and then we think about things like you know drones delivering things or robots. You know, we keep trying that here in the states, and it doesn't work out. You know, they 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 tried it with pizza, right? They were going to deliver pizza. Well, it, that worked until you know there was something, say, in in its way, or you know, or it got hit, or you know, people went, "Ooh, pizza!" <laughs> you know, and took the pizza. You know, and, and you can't, I can't envision drones because you know I don't know how many times I live in a cul-de-sac, multiple times a day there's Amazon, there's delivery trucks. You're not going to have all these drones. I mean, they just bash into each other. Right. Um, but, but, it, you know, things are going to change to some degree with what can be provided. Well, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I hear what you're saying about drones and we haven't seen that so much in this country, but of course the drones will get more intelligent. They'll mm-hmm. get cleverer. They'll get right. they'll go, oh, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll move. get more mm-hmm more awareness of of the mm-hmm. territory right. you know they'll they'll learn too so who mm-hmm. know who knows where that can go i mean mm-hmm. you know and of course we're seeing drones used in in warfare so right. um, yeah and and you know things like drones and robots obviously make sense in dangerous situations you know where you can send one in or fly over and you know and, and you're protecting the humans um you know and and so it makes sense there but then it's like well why can't it deliver my pizza well, you know, <laughs> ask again in five years. We'll, mm, we'll see. Oh, yeah. As long as my pizza's hot. I'm like, whatever. But <laughs> but this this does show that organizations are these living, breathing entities, because to me, it, part of the definition is that they are growing and evolving. And and that's kind of to me what is is part of what living is. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, we do see the businesses that say, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to stay in this little field and hope that things work out. And, and you know, I can't I don't I can't even think of any businesses anymore that have not evolved to some degree. No, uh, I mean, none, none spring to mind mm-hmm. uh, for me um, that you would call businesses. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, what? what what just crossed my mind was, well, say a massage practitioner or something. Mm-hmm. There, you know, there there right. are people doing personal mm-hmm. kinds of service, mm-hmm. and maybe that's a bit more stable. But mm-hmm. in terms of of yeah, the kind of businesses mm-hmm. we think of when we use that word, I I I think it's kind of it's mm-hmm. inevitable. And you either you, you kind of get you change mm-hmm. or you get taken over right by somebody right. who who's going mm-hmm. to incorporate you into mm-hmm. a bigger structure. Mm-hmm. I mean it that that's always been the mm-hmm. way of the way of the world and the mm-hmm. way of business mm-hmm. and so you know a lot of this has to do for me with with our ability to be in flow mm-hmm. and by being in flow i mean our ability to kind of sense the way things are moving and okay. to use our awareness and our intuition mm-hmm. because we always have a, 
a choice in a way. If you're thrown mm-hmm. into the river, well, you have a choice of whether you swim upstream yeah, or sink you or swim, swim downstream. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, sinking is also an alternative. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking, let's assume you can swim, okay. but you might you want you might want to choose to swim downstream mm-hmm. with the flow mm-hmm. rather than swimming upstream against it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, a kind of pretty uh, useful skill to -hmm. develop for ourselves and Mm -hmm. for how we work as organizations Mm -hmm. that we don't think that we can control everything in the Mm -hmm. world part of the history of Mm -hmm. what i was describing as the fifth system and all Mm -hmm. the science and the technology Mm -hmm. is we got very heavily into oh we can do anything we want we can control it all Mm -hmm. and you know we we discover well you know that doesn't work we get right climate change or we mm-hmm. get we get um, covid <laughs> habit, we get covid mm-hmm. we get habit habitat mm-hmm. destruction we get mm-hmm. all the all the things that we mm-hmm. know go on in the world because we didn't see the consequences mm-hmm. of what happens if you you know put a mine right. in that vicinity mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. and so our ability to be kind of sensitive to the mm-hmm. world and to the flow of the world and to be intuitive mm-hmm. um that that increasingly becomes a, an essential skill and not mm-hmm. just a kind of luxury. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you've had you know I, I'm aware that you you've had a, a guest not too long ago. Um, I think it was Kim Woods who was talking mm-hmm. about astrology, right? Mm-hmm. And there's lots of stuff that comes up around mm-hmm. that. Okay, well, mm-hmm. what are the things in our environment right. that? Mm-hmm. So you know, let's assume for a minute that there are influences. Mm-hmm on us Mm -hmm. that we don't know about and we can't Mm -hmm. see whether it's you know the movement of -hmm. of mars or or whatever Mm -hmm. it doesn't actually matter what kind of influence it Mm -hmm. it is what matters is how how much can we develop our awareness Mm -hmm. of those non-visible subtle Mm -hmm. influences Mm -hmm. and incorporate that into how we see the world and how we Mm -hmm. work in the world Mm -hmm. and how we make our decisions mm-hmm. right because one of the consequences in a linear in, in a living system is it's n- it's non-linear mm-hmm. now a lot of the training that i had and i suspect nearly everybody right. you went from had, here to here to here to it was like you say, a to b to c to d mm-hmm. yeah and so you 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 get people even now when people mm-hmm. talk about climate change mm-hmm. they've got these graphs and they say well right. we're not really in trouble until 20 mm-hmm. 2050 Mm-hmm. But when you look at the interactions that might be taking place in mm-hmm. the world, well, we might not have that long mm-hmm. or it might have side effects already mm-hmm. in terms of we can mm-hmm. always we can already see, mm-hmm. you know, fires and floods and right. mm-hmm. stuff happening. So the in order to deal with the complexity, we can't function from a linear mindset because mm-hmm. the interactions between the various mm-hmm. things that are happening take it outside of that mm-hmm. linear trajectory and it means among other things that the decision that we made last month mm-hmm. may not be the right decision anymore mm-hmm. so we have if we have kind of fixed right and wrong mindsets around oh this is the way to do it and this mm-hmm. isn't and the context changes we're unable you know we're unable to mm-hmm. uh, adapt and therefore right. we we get Side, mm-hmm. side swiped and living systems now I will, i'll come back again to living mm-hmm. systems living systems don't work like that mm-hmm. you know a forest ecology mm-hmm. where you've got all the different creatures and you've got the fun- the fungi that mm-hmm. communicate between trees and all the mm-hmm. things that people have only discovered in the last decade mm-hmm. about how a large ecosystem works mm-hmm. all of those things are continually changing and they're adapting to each other mm-hmm. all of the time and we have that same requirement mm-hmm. for our organizations we mm-hmm. even have it uh, we even have it for our bodies i mean our bodies mm-hmm. are self organizing systems right. mm-hmm. you you can't tell each one of your whatever it is 20 30 40 trillion cells mm-hmm. that this is what you're going to do now mm-hmm. we totally rely on the fact that the body actually yeah is it, it knows the heart knows to beat the you know all of those things mm-hmm. all of those things mm-hmm. and all the relationships within it and mm-hmm. we know what happens when it goes wrong if you if you drink too much you discover something about the importance of your liver 
Mm-hmm. And right. you discover that it mm-hmm. isn't just the liver that actually affects the whole body. Mm-hmm. The whole system mm-hmm. responds. So this sense of living systems, and we're the same around our emotions. Our mm-hmm. emotions affect right. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And you talked of the heart. I mean, one of the things that people don't know, most people don't know, is that they think the brain is in charge, but actually more data is being passed from the heart to the brain Mm -hmm. than the other way around. So, in fact, the heart has a huge amount Mm -hmm. to say about who we are. Mm -hmm. And that's poopy. You know, you'd get people who come along from a kind Mm -hmm. of scientism point of view and they say, well, it's just a pump. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it isn't. Actually, (laughs) if it's not working. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we we underestimate Mm -hmm the the complexity of those living right. systems and, mm-hmm. and the importance of well what do we do mm-hmm. to allow the intelligence mm-hmm. to function at, at its mm-hmm. best and so that's the par- the parallel mm-hmm. between well how are we individually with our emotions mm-hmm. you know that's a, a kind of part of maybe right. a coaching conversation mm-hmm. or how how are our organizations working in terms of the flow of information mm-hmm. and the control and mm-hmm. who makes decisions and how much is coming from the bottom mm-hmm. and how much is co- that that needs a different kind of space mm-hmm. in which to happen mm-hmm. and when it happens it's powerful right right but the problem is we like it to be linear you know i like to know that this comes after this and this comes after this and you know, and, 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 and so how do we expand our minds to, to be able to get past that? Mm. Uh, I know we, we, (laughs) we could talk for days about this, right? (laughs) Well, it's a, it's a great, it's a great question, but it's one of the reasons that, um, you know, among the things that I do and have done is to teach intuition Mm -hmm. because it's to help us kind of learn oh, there is another way mm-hmm. of kind of processing information mm-hmm. in the world. You know, we're we're hugely, if, if you talk about left brain and right brain, mm-hmm. you know, we've been hugely trained that kind of 95% mm-hmm. of what we do is done from that linear analytical right. mm-hmm. process. And actually the right brain has huge amounts of capability mm-hmm. in sensing and pattern mm-hmm. recognition and picking up on subtle clues. Mm-hmm. Right. Because it's the creative side. It is, it is, that's, it, that's what it was built to do. That's exactly, exactly. And mm-hmm. um, so, you know, the answer to your question of what, what's the change? Well, the, the change is to learn what's possible with the kind of right brain processes what mm-hmm. happens when i let go and you know people are increasingly aware of you know mindfulness and some mm-hmm. of the things mm-hmm. where where we we begin to let go mm-hmm. but there's a lot more there's a lot more that can be mm-hmm. done and it's the the journey into that space mm-hmm. of um allowing more of the intelligence mm-hmm. to be present in me Mm-hmm. more of the intelligence to be present in the organization because it's it's there mm-hmm. it's there to be harvested right. we 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 just have ways of um working with that and i'm reminded that there's a quote from mark twain i don't know whether you know this one where he he said it ain't what we don't know that gets us into trouble it's what we know for certain that just ain't so mm-hmm and we live in a world of a lot of just ain't so's that mm-hmm. we've been taught. But when you let go of those mm-hmm. and you kind of shift into the ability to, well, w- what is it we know but don't yet know that we know? Mm-hmm. What happens when I allow myself to become aware of that? Mm-hmm. What happens when I operate more from my gut feel? Mm-hmm. And one of the things I've discovered in my life about working from intuition is I can look back and I can see choices that I made 30 years ago where I decided, oh, this is the way it's supposed Mm -hmm. to go and this is the way I'm going to make it Mm -hmm. go. That I tried to force things Mm -hmm. in a direction which actually was swimming upstream. Mm -hmm. Right. It was your career. It was your love life. It was whatever. Mm -hmm. It was the house I bought. It was Mm -hmm. was a particular 
mm-hmm. s- story I'm I'm thinking of that I shouldn't have bought. Mm-hmm. I had the opportunity or the signs coming from the world mm-hmm. that actually uh, there's a resistance here mm-hmm. to this happening. Mm-hmm. And I could have backed away and mm-hmm. didn't. And that was just before we had one of the big... Uh, the time in in the uk when interest rates on mortgages rocketed from mm-hmm. about three percent to about 14. yikes yeah uh, <laughs> and effectively i i lost the house mm-hmm. right because you just couldn't afford it mm-hmm. yeah um because it was it also coincided mm-hmm. with well you know there was there was a, a recession and the work dried mm-hmm. up so you you get hit from both mm-hmm. sides right I could have not been in that position. I could mm-hmm. have stayed in the house I was in before. And so one of the things that I've learned over this journey with intuition is that it's actually a, a more effective way to operate in, in the world. Mm-hmm. And I don't try to swim upstream mm-hmm. anymore, or at least right. I hope I don't. You mm-hmm. know, I don't make as many mistakes. Mm-hmm. Or All of these things are part of a, a, a different way of mm-hmm. of being in the world right well and and we feel those right you know whether it's your your gut instinct or you know you you've written the email or the social media post that you're just you're ripping somebody and the little voice in your head is going don't do that don't do that no no danger danger <laughs> um and 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 we do have to pay attention to those now you know like you said we still have that choice we can hit send we can hit post but I think the thing that we always have to remember, and this is where people forget, is there are consequences when you have made those decisions. Um, like you said, you know, you lost the house. People lose their jobs. They lose their friends. They, you know, lose their lives um, sometimes based on on mm-hmm. some of those those things. Uh, you know, I was having the discussion regarding social media with some folks that I was talking about and or talking with, and. And it was an organization and, the, and there were some people who were posting things they shouldn't. And so people had said, you have to tell them they can't. And I said, no, no, we can't tell them they can't do that. You know, they, they, they have every right to post what they want, but they have to know there can be consequences. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the old thing here in the United States with, you know, First Amendment. Now, First Amendment is actually a lot different than what a lot of people think. It, but um, but it said, you know, it, it's like, you know, you can't go somewhere and scream fire that causes a riot when there's no fire. Um, you know, there are consequences to that. You can say that, but you have to understand there are consequences. And I think that's the trick is some people think, no, there's not consequences. Um, you know, I, I can yeah. do what I want. And, and of course, those people are, you know, in essence called narcissists. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, we we do have to understand, yeah, we can make those choices. But what are the results of those choices? Well, certainly we have to understand that. And what typically people get into is there, I think, are two primary reasons why mm-hmm. they why they override. Mm-hmm. One is emotional. Right. Like, I'm going to hit that uh, no matter what. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and the, the other is habit. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well, I'm not going to think about it at all. Mm-hmm. Or... If I get that little voice, Mm -hmm. I'm going to ignore it because this is the way it's Mm -hmm. done. And so the the whole sense of, well, how do we kind of unwind? How do we expand our Mm -hmm. mindsets? How do we become more aware Mm -hmm. both of ourselves Mm -hmm. and what's around us Mm -hmm. so that we don't narrow the choices Mm -hmm. that are in front of us so that we have more sense of, Mm -hmm. you know, what are the outcomes Mm -hmm. that might come with with that Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean i totally agree with you that Mm -hmm. that you you i mean there are no free lunches in that sense Mm -hmm. you you, right you have to deal with well Mm -hmm. this is what might happen Mm -hmm. right you know and and in businesses you know we need to in many ways we need to flatten them right so that you know one person knows that they can go to the CEO or the chief marketing officer and, and say, hey, have you thought about this? Um, you know, and now we still need people in charge, right? We can't have just everybody going every which way, you know, so it's never going to be a completely flat organization. But, you know, I remember years ago, I worked for a very large um, insurance company. And one of the things that my CEO loved to do was go to the mailroom 
and talk to the guys down there. And, and he's, you know, and, 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 you know, I was his head of communications. And so I talked to him a lot and, and I was never afraid to go to him. I mean, you know, I've never been afraid to go straight to the top. I've just always thought, why not? Um, but I, you know, I talked to him about it and he said, first of all, they're good dudes. <laughs> you know, he just liked talking to him, <laughs> but he said, they are, you know, because they would go around to every area, obviously they were the mail room. And, and he said, and they talked to the admin assistants, the secretaries. So the, the, the people, in most cases, it was the women who knew what was going on. And he said, these people know more about what's going on in the company than I could ever hope to know. And, and, and I just, you know, I mean, this was 30 years ago that he did that. And it was, it was so interesting because he did realize that, you know, up in his ivory tower on the top floor, he wasn't going to get to know what was going on. He had to go down literally to the basement and, and know what was going on. And I think, you know, just to, to the degrees that it is possible, business owners and, and managers and people, they need to, to do that. They need to know what's going on um, and not isolate themselves. And that's a scary thing because it comes back to what we were saying before. They might be told digital is where it's, you know, we're going to have digital pictures. You need to deal with that. We're not going to do DVRs anymore. You know, all of these various things. And, you know, and, and that's scary. And so people think, no, we're just not going to do that. And then of course the business is, is unsuccessful. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, everything you've said, it's a, it's a really good story. And unfortunately it's quite a rare one. Where, yeah, you know, where, where, well, the, CEO, really where funny. the CEO it, it, is it, it, willing to go and find well, out. What's and when really we see him in walking in the halls, we're like, what's he doing? Why is he here? What's he doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> because we as the employees were not used to that. Um, you know, and and uh, so it was it, it was very interesting. Yeah. But one way or another, that sense of well, mm -hmm. getting more information into mm -hmm. the system, you know, he he had his own way, mm -hmm. but even that it kind of it worked through him. It relied mm -hmm. on him to, right. to do the data gathering. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you create an organization mm -hmm. where the data is kind of self-gathering mm -hmm. and where it mm -hmm. inhabits the organization right. more? Right. And, and it's all, you know, it's all doable. And it, mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't mean totally flat organizations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's not a kind of self-organization isn't anarchy. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's got more inbuilt intelligence than, mm -hmm. than right. that. Um but it's yeah, it it's all I think where it's where the future is mm -hmm. is taking us, mm -hmm. and it's already visible. You know, there are organisations already which do do that. Some mm -hmm. of them have done it for quite a long mm -hmm. time, like Ricardo Semler's uh, organisation was do doing that twenty five, mm -hmm. thirty years ago. So it's possible. It's being mm -hmm. demonstrated to work. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know there's just a, a resistance to it and a lot of the resistance actually comes from the people who own corporations mm -hmm. rather than the people who are in them. we don't want to be told that we're not doing it right well no and you know they go into that mm -hmm. where you were early on talking about the, the fear mm -hmm. oh well what if what if this doesn't work what if mm -hmm. that impacts our right. dividends mm -hmm. and so you know you you get a lot of mm -hmm. um inbuilt pushback mm -hmm. from that right well and you know there there has to be some boundaries that are put in you know we've we've all had the managers that have said my door is always open right but it's really not because they have work they have to be doing <laughs> you know? but it's not like they can say if you're coming to complain that is between this hour and this hour you know, there's, you've got to kind of figure this out and and so then what happens is it means the door is never open yeah. So creating flexibility within mm -hmm. systems is, you know, that's part of mm -hmm. the journey. You know, the setting setting the boundaries, mm -hmm. as you say, is um, you know, it doesn't it it's not anarchy, mm -hmm. so there are boundaries. It's just that they're fluid and flexible mm -hmm. and we they may need to change from mm -hmm. time to time because something's happened. Mm -hmm. You know, something's happened in the in the world which causes us to need to have different mm -hmm. conversations mm -hmm. than we were having before. So how quickly do we change to make sure the mm -hmm. conversations we have are the ones we need, the right, right. ones with the right people? Mm -hmm. And you know, there's lots of good ways of doing mm -hmm. that. Right. Well, and of course people need to know that, you know, that if if somebody is asking for their opinion and their input, that it will be accepted 
in the way it was maybe intended. It, so in, in, what I'm trying to say is, you know, if if I'm told, hey, I can go to John and I can tell him anything. If I go to you and say, hey, John, this isn't working. I need to know you're not going to fire me. <laughs> I mean, you know? um, and so, you know, I think that's the other thing is we might be told our door is always open or, you know, give us feedback all the time. But we have to know that, that you know, it will it, it will be OK for us to do that. Yeah. So uh, trust is an essential mm -hmm. component of mm -hmm. all systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even a, an essential component mm -hmm. of safety systems, mm -hmm. because if people don't trust that speaking up mm -hmm. is is an OK thing to mm -hmm. do, then systems become unsafe right. because we don't pick up mm -hmm you know real potential life mm -hmm. threat mm -hmm. problems and, and i've i've come across this with you know organizations that mm -hmm. are you know maybe in the oil industry or mm -hmm. you know right. the, mm -hmm. or the rail industry where mm -hmm. where safety you know it really is a matter of life and mm -hmm. death for people so you have to be able to create trust mm -hmm. For for those kinds of situations, mm -hmm. but actually, it's it's also essential if you want a living system because mm -hmm. that that can't work on the basis that well these messages are not as acceptable, mm -hmm. right? Because those messages might mm -hmm. be crucial. Mm -hmm. So it has to, it has to be done in a way that mm -hmm. all information uh, is is considered. Mm -hmm valid right. that doesn't mean how you deliver the information right. doesn't you can matter. still ignore it but <laughs> well, well, and, yes and you can still ignore it and, and but you know it has mm -hmm. to be delivered with some mm -hmm. kind of conscious conscious yeah, conscience a little tact about, maybe sometimes about the, <laughs> right. the effect mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah mm -hmm. unless of course you know there are times when shouting yeah fire, you can't that's say not hey. tactic, tactical, but it has yeah. to be done mm -hmm. right yeah, but it, so, it's very yeah. much like the human body. You know, pain is telling you there is something wrong, um, yeah. you know, and 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 we ignore it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 then we just oh, no, something was really wrong. And and then it escalates, you know, and, yes. and I think that is probably one of the, the, the best, you know, in my mind, at least the best examples is when we ignore pain. And it gets worse. I mean, you know, hey, you've got this pain in your side and I'm going to ignore it. Oh, wait, it was my appendix and it's burst, um, you know, and, and all of those things. But pleasure, I mean, you know, the same thing, you know, we, we like that. So we're going to do more of that. Um, and but yeah, I think, you know, when we ignore the pain in organizations, that's where we're going to have the the issues. And, and maybe the pain is that we have people quitting or consumers not buying or, you know, all of these various things, those are pain and we have to pay attention to them. Indeed. Indeed. I mean, they're all part of the data. Mm -hmm. You know, In a sense, you can't have too much data about mm -hmm. the system because the more data it mm -hmm. has about itself, the less likely mm -hmm. it is to, to do damage or right. to create unforeseen mm -hmm. consequences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, you know, they're a good ac academic um laws if you mm -hmm. like about um th about that so mm -hmm. you know it's not just it, it's visible mm -hmm. in a practical sense it's pragmatic mm -hmm. we can understand that but it's also got you know all of the mm -hmm. things that i'm talking have science mm -hmm. behind them. right mm -hmm. well and and i think that's the thing is is it is backed up by science and so then people are like oh okay um you know then then it makes sense you know when we talk about you know, energy and, you know, and, and things people, you know, they don't always accept it, but if you tell them, no, this is science for the most part, they accept it. I mean, you know, I mean, there are people who will still say, no, you know, this, this is not true. We don't believe that science. Okay. That, that it, but it's like we said, that was, that's their choice. Um, you know, and, yeah. and um, so, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I think we do like, you know, like I said, we like to go from A to B to C to D. So if I'm told, okay, I got to go to, to L, I need to know why. <laughs> you know? And if you tell me why and it makes sense, then I'll probably say okie dokie. Um, but, you know, if you tell me you just have to go to L because I said to, more than likely I'm going to say no. <laughs> yeah. And that is that is 
tricky and it mm-hmm. goes back to the way that we're educated to believe mm-hmm. certain things about the way mm-hmm. that works you know right. the, 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 there's reality isn't the way that people mm-hmm. generally think it is mm-hmm. because we've been we've been taught mm-hmm. something which is mm-hmm. false actually mm-hmm. about what's what most mm-hmm. people think science says mm-hmm. And what a lot of science says, mm-hmm. because it kind of runs big industries, mm-hmm. and you know, so there's a lot of protection around, mm-hmm. you know, pharmaceuticals mm-hmm. or, you know, the the, the way that um, that science is presented in public, mm-hmm. because there's a lot of money behind right. presenting mm-hmm. that. But actually, there's a huge gap. Mm-hmm. And you know, when I when I originally had a a, a kind of psychic telepathic experience mm-hmm. 35 years ago, that having come from a scientific mm-hmm. background and ha- having done something that, oh, that's not possible, according to what I've been taught, mm-hmm. that led to a massive journey. And mm-hmm. it's what led to me writing a book that's called The Science of Possibility, because mm-hmm. I needed to understand, right. okay, how does the world really mm-hmm. work? Mm-hmm. So, you know, if there's if there's something that kind of comes out of that it's we actually in order to understand why we might need to go to l Mm -hmm. we need to be able to accept that some of what we've been told sits in that Mm -hmm. it just ain't so category Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. we we believe it we think we know it Mm -hmm. but it just Mm -hmm. ain't so right Oh my gosh, John, it, 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 this has been fascinating and time has, has definitely flown by. I think we need to continue this discussion um, on a future podcast because it is, it's just, to me, it's very interesting. Um, and so it's, it's fun to talk about, but tell us if somebody wants to, to work with you, how do they find you and what are the services that you provide? Well, I, I do a lot, but I guess the core of it is work with organizations to bring about the changes that I've talked about. And Mm -hmm. I do that personally. I do it through uh, the consultancy I work with, Mm -hmm. Future Considerations. But they can find they can find me initially on Mm spiralfutures.com. You have the opportunity there to book a 20 minute kind Mm -hmm. of no strings conversation Mm -hmm. to talk about, well, is it, you know, Mm -hmm. this is what I think I need. Mm -hmm. Is that what you do Mm -hmm. um and i'm very happy to have those conversations um and yeah i i you know my my books if people are interested in to to know different ways of looking at science or money Mm there on amazon science possibility reinventing capitalism Mm -hmm. it's all there and spiral futures also has kind of gateways into if anybody thinks they might really love to know the depth mm-hmm. of spiral dynamics. oh yeah there's lots That's, of great content mm-hmm. there, there's yeah um so yeah because that's another thing I do is mm-hmm. I teach, I teach mm-hmm. spiral dynamics. I love it. And I teach the, the organizational development mm-hmm. stuff that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I don't just do it. I also mm-hmm. teach how spiral dynamics informs that. I love it. Well, oh my gosh, John, this has, has been, as I said, very, very fascinating. Do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think what if reality isn't what you thought it is? I love it. I love it. Now we're going to make everybody go eek. Um, but <laughs> you're right. We need to think about that. So, you know, John, this has been absolutely wonderful. I'm Deb Creer. I've been talking with John Freeman. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.